Okay, I want to try and clear up the lumbo sacral plexus for you because if you look at picture, it looks terrifying, but I don't really think it's all that bad. I hope that I can show that to you. Okay, so the lumbar sacral plexus is really two plexuses, two different ones, a lumbar one and a sacral. They're discussed together because they're really somewhat continuous. So let me first show you, this is the actual lumbar plexus, okay? It's made up primarily from L1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and some contribution from T12. It's formed from the ventral rainbow of spinal nerves L1 through L4, and some fibers from T12. And the nerves that they form is the iliohypogastric, ilioinguinal, genitofemoral, lateral femoral cutaneous, femoral nerve, and the obturator nerve. Okay, now what you see here, in it, um, although it's formed from the ventral rami of spinal nerves, that ventral rami then splits into posterior and anterior um, parts. So the dark and yellow that you hear, you know, one section, and I don't even, even need, to know, need to know which one is which. Um, one section is posterior and the other is, is anterior. Okay, so these are posterior, the dark and yellow, and the lighter yellows are anterior. But I will not question you on what is anterior versus posterior. I just want you to know that because when you see what contributes to the femoral and obturator nerves, both of them are from L2, 3, and 4. Okay, so you have your femoral here and your um, obturator here. Okay, now they're both formed from L2, 3, and 4. But just what I want you to know that is that femoral is posterior and obturator is anterior. Okay, but, and they're really basically the only ones that separate between anterior and posterior that, that you need to worry about. Okay, and this is your sacral plexus. Same thing, formed by ventral rami, but it splits uh, into anterior and posterior divisions. Okay, so anterior and posterior divisions. Um, it's formed by something called the lumbosacral trunk, which is really just L4 and L5. The anterior division of S1, S2, and S3, and S4, and they form the nerve to quadratus femoris and gemelli inferior, the nerve to obturator internus and gemelli superior, nerve to piriformis, superior and gluteal, superior and inferior gluteal nerves, and the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve, and then the big sciatic, which breaks into your tibial and common perineal or common fibular nerve. Okay, so if you notice, a lot of the sacral plexus is innervating your gluteal area, okay, except for the sciatic, which I moved down your leg. Okay, so now you combine those two plexi into what is actually the lumbosacral plexus. Okay, don't memorize this image. This is insane. This is not what I want you to memorize. I just want you to understand that it is actually two plexus combined, the lumbar and the sacral, to form the lumbosacral plexus. This is actually what I want you to know. Okay, this is a very basic, tells you exactly what is formed from what nerve roots. So L1 forms the iliohypogastric and the ilioinguinal ligaments, and those innervate the internal oblique and transverse abdominis. L1 and L2 forms a genital femoral nerve. L2-3, lateral cutaneous. L2-4, through four, both the obturator and the femoral. Remember, one is anterior and one is posterior. Obturator nerve goes to the muscle of the medial thigh, femoral nerve to the muscles in the anterior thigh. L4 to S1 is superior gluteal, which does glute medius, minimus, and the TFL. L5 through S2 form both the inferior gluteal and the nerve to piriformis, nerve to obturator, and externus, and the nerve to gemelli. Inferior gluteal is going to do the glute max. And all these short, all these nerves, nerve to piriformis, obturator, externus, and gemelli, you can think of as they're all the short rotators of the hip. L4 to S3 forms the sciatic, which later splits into peroneal and fibular. You do need to know these root levels, that L4 through S2 forms the peroneal and fibular, L4 through S3 tibial. S1 to S3 is posterior cutaneous nerve to the thigh, S2 to S3 the pelvic splanchnic and the perforating cutaneous, S4 and S2 and S3 pudendal, S4 nerve to the levator ani. Now, let's think about which ones we care about most here. Obviously we care about um, the muscular branches, right? Sciatic, short rotators, superior and inferior gluteals, obturator, femoral. We do care about this because it does do a lot of part of uh, cutaneous innervation. Um, genital femoral, inguinal and iliohypogastric, um, less important to us. Uh, it's very rare that you lose innervation to your internal, to your obliques other than through a spinal cord injury. Genital femoral is primarily cutaneous. 
So we really care mostly about the middle in here. This area is what we're really interested in. I won't test you on Planknik. Plank Perforating cutaneous, well, you, you know, you just know the S2 and what, what they form. Nerve to elevator, and I, you know, we saw this muscle in the pelvic floor. Um, so we just kind of know that's S4. So if you look at it this way, the plexus doesn't look quite so horrifying, I think. If this is pretty much what you need to know to be able to figure out if a nerve root is damaged, what kind of, um, you know, what you might expect to see clinically. So I would focus heavily on this rather than the actual pictures of the plexus. Okay, and here are your dermatomes. Again, we will be going to the same thing for the upper extremity. You have four pictures, two different versions of the dermatome map. We will go with this left-hand side right here. Okay, this is the cutaneous map that we will go by. Remember, this is sensory innervation, right? It tests a nerve root. So let me just be clear. If a nerve root is damaged right as it comes off the spine, it is a peripheral nerve injury, and you would use this dermatome map. If there is central nervous cord damage, you would still use this map. The only time this map is good for peripheral injury is if the nerve root, as soon as it comes off the spine, is involved. Once the nerves go into the brachial, into this lumbosacral plexus, this is no longer an effective um, map of innervation. Okay, so again, if it is a central nervous system disorder, you use a dermatome map. If it is a nerve root just as it comes off the spinal cord before it enters a plexus, this map is still okay. Hopefully that's clear. Okay, and this I think is much clearer for the myotomes, and it's more what I was talking about, how there is a representative level. So I was telling you before that C5 is the elbow flexors, C6 wrist extensors, seven triceps. So we'll go with this map in the future. So here for the lower extremities, you need to know that to test L2, I would use the hip flexors. To check L3, knee extensors, L4 dorsiflexors, five long extensors, S1 ankle plantar flexors. Um, this again, this key sensory, this is once the nerves enter the plexus, this is what you would test. Okay, this is not the same as a dermatome. Don't worry about this. I'm not going to ask you about this section. This is the area I want you to know from this chart. Okay, the myotomes. What muscle would you test if you wanted to test the L2 nerve root? You would test the hip flexors. Okay, so ignore this. Not worry about it right now. Worry about this myotome both for the uppers and lowers. Okay, this is clearer than that picture I gave you for the upper extremities. This does break it down to a single level, so we'll go by this one. Okay, that's all you need to know about the lumbosacral plexus.